And I'm really passionate about this question. What's the area of theatre I'm most passionate mm. about? Youth theatre. Yeah. New playwrights, producers, directors, design, lighting, wardrobe, music, our future. Wow. That's the clip. That's the clip right there. <laughs> That's awesome. You're listening to the Theatre Thoughts Podcast. My name's Justin, or you can call me Stin. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. If you're a returning listener, welcome back. We're nearing the end of our first season, but not before we bring you some stellar new guests to discuss what's happening in Australian theatre. On this episode, we sit down with Grant Dodwell, Creative Director of Australian Theatre Live, the newest streaming platform just for Australian theatre productions. Grant talks us through the creation of ATL, as well as stories from his wealth of experience in the Australian entertainment industry. Don't forget, you can find all our episode information on our dedicated podcast site. Follow the link in this episode's description, or follow us on our official podcast Instagram page at ttpod underscore official. So, get ready for yet another episode of the Theatre Thoughts Podcast. Welcome to a new episode of Theatre Thoughts Podcast. You might hear a bit of background music because we have the Pacific Runway uh, on at the moment. Yeah, they were fantastic. What about the drummers? Ah. There were these drummers out the front, you know, sort of um, Pacific Islander drummers and Mm. they were just extraordinary, you know. so good, weren't they? I just rocked up and then all of a sudden there was smoke and noise (laughs) and I was like, whoa, what is going on here? It was great. Well, we have uh, a very special guest. We have the creative director of Australian Theatre Live with us, Grant Dodwell. Thank hello, you for hello, joining hello. us. So a little bit about yourself yeah. uh, to get everyone to know you. You're a professional actor, writer and producer mm-hmm. with over 40 years experience in oh, theatre, film goodness. and television. Oh, I know. Oh, must hit sometimes. <laughs> Actually, I think it's a bit more than that. Oh really? Yeah. Wow. But let's not go down. Let's keep let's keep it at forty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you've also trained at NIDA, and you're best known for playing Dr. Simon Bowen yeah. in a country practice, bum, bum, winning bum, three bum. Logie Awards bum, for your bum, role. Bum, bum. Yes. Uh, well, actually, it was four Logie Awards. Oh wow. Yeah. One was for best person of the in the universe. Yeah. No, yeah. Of course. Of course. No, it was <laughs> it was a New South Wales award. Okay. Yeah. So uh, there are four. I think there's somewhere. I don't know. I'm not really sure. Isn't That's that great. terrible? But I think there is one all shined up in our office. Okay. Just as a token Logie. Yeah. But very different in those days, the Logies. I yeah. mean, uh, not that they were parochial, but they were. Um, but they, <laughs> there was, te- television was the only medium. Of course. Yeah. It was massive. Uh, you wasn't know, it? Um, there was no internet. Mm. You know, it was cinema or TV. Yeah. And we had the four channels and that was it. Yeah. So your ratings, Mm. if you were in a show like a country practice, could just be ginormous. Yeah. And, in fact, I think Darling Penny Cook, who played Vicky the Vet and myself, when we got married, it was the highest oh. ratings I think ever in Queensland. Oh, really? For, in the history of Australian television. Wow. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's insane. <laughs> I only did it for three and a half years. Yeah. The show ran for 11, but I sort of said my farewells along with mm. Penny and Shane and, and Annie. That's right. Molly and Brendan. Okay. For those people out there <laughs> yeah. who follow. It's been I, big resurgence. Has there really? Yeah. I, 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 I unfortunately cannot say that I've seen it. Uh, might That's have been right. a little bit before before me, I suppose. I'd say so. I'd yeah. say so. And you can see it on 7 Plus. Can you? There yes, you go. Yes, you can watch it. Excellent. And uh, Melon Tate, the playwright, yeah. who wrote uh, The Great Potato Race. Okay. It is now being turned into a film for Great. Paramount. That's good. She uh, runs a podcast. Okay. Yeah, called um, A Country Pod- Podcast. Oh, cool. Yeah. So there's been a bit of a resurgence. Yeah. Yeah, I, I liked what you said about like how the film and TV used to be that thing. Because yes. I remember, like, I said this to um, a couple of students recently that you know they'll never understand the thrill of ha- getting to the ad break, and then you only have like two minutes, maybe a minute and a half mm. at most, to go do your stuff, and you got to get back before it starts because yeah. everything's just yeah. now, now, now. Oh no, v- very different um, uh, medium media landscape. Mm. It's insane now because it is. It's shifting, continually yeah. shifting. Exactly. You know, for, when you look at your TikToks and, yeah. <laughs> you know, what's the most popular app now, mm. 
and where people watch and how long they watch. Mm. You know, how long is it? Oh, it's about half an hour. Mm. Yeah, I'm not too sure if I'll watch that. Exactly. Is it, if it's three minutes, I'll watch it. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that attention span is just like yeah. getting ever so shorter, isn't it? It's Although some of the movies are getting really long. Yeah. I mean, I went and saw Northman, you know. Oh, okay. I missed that one. amazing film. But that was like two hours, 30 yeah, forty minutes or something outrageous. Yeah, there's some long ones, but as long I think as long as the film's good, like the time yeah. just doesn't matter, does it? That's very true. Yeah, yeah. Well, speaking of the changing landscapes, you're obviously running uh, one of the creative directors of Australian Theatre Live, which mm. I watched a show on the other night. Great. For my research, I watched the truth of it is, or on the matter. Oh, oh th- this must be true. This must be true. Yes, right. yes. Um, I watched Living that one. Memory. It was very entertaining and yeah. so well shot. Oh, great. As well, because um, we we're talking earlier and uh, about national theatre, mm. which is kind of like a, I guess a blueprint for mm. what you're going for. And uh, and I saw Benedict Cumberbatch's performance of Hamlet National Theatre Live in Cinema, and it's just. The exact same like cinematography you guys use. You oh, know, you got you. your close ups, you got the yeah. audience in there as well. So it's really well done. Well, um, that was really interesting shoot, this much uh, true. Louis Nara play. And it was based on the old fits and based on individuals that frequented the old fits front right. bar. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's how close it was oh. to the story. And Louis Nara, of course, uh, Cozzy, mm. a well-known Australian writer, playwright, cinema um, screenplay writer. And so this play was based on individuals in the front bar right. of the Fitzroy, but they called it the front bar of the Rising Sun Hotel. Yeah. And, um, yeah, as you said, very funny play. But we had one, two, three, four, five, six, Nine cameras, I think, in oh, that. Oh, wow. In the 60-seat theatre. Now, which theatre was it? Because I was trying it was the at entire the time. It was at the Fitz. Yeah. I was The entire time I was sitting there going, is it Griffin? Is it KXT? Yeah. Is it Ensemble? No, it's not any of yeah. them. I couldn't put my finger on it. Yeah. But see, that's what we love. It was so small. Mm. Generally, we set up our monitors to because the cameramen are on comms gear. Right. So we can talk to them. They can't talk to us, obviously. Mm. But we always film one show. Yeah. And one show only. Oh, okay. That's it. We don't try and shoot over one week or do pickups occasionally. And I think I'm lying there because with this much is true, one of the back cameras, mm. when you look from the back across to the audience, yeah. we had to do the next night. Okay. Which means you didn't see any cameras when ah, you saw that shot. Okay. That's what. So, but I remember we had a creaky old van mm. with sitting on – um, milk crates yeah. in a van yeah. <laughs> with watching the monitors because, yeah. as I said, we talk to the cameraman and say, Tony, can you tighten up a bit right. or Roger, can you widen up? And I might say there's an entrance coming up mm. in two lines. Okay. Uh, you know, Jeremy, can you frame? Louise, can you frame over? Wow. So it, it's all live. It's very – we don't want to lose that feeling of live theatre. And yeah. I might add – we're not a replacement for live theatre. That's yeah. not what it's about. No, no, not at all. Yeah, yeah. it's and it's getting theatre to places that where people will never get to see mm. a show, which only runs three and a half weeks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah. it's education and all that. But this much is true, Louis Nara. There you go. An and outrageous. I, play. I think you're right. You didn't. It doesn't lose the the theatrical aspect of it. Mm. You know, it it, it well, kind of enhances it in a way because you do see their close ups and their emotions are like much more like prevalent, I guess, if you're sitting right at the back of the theatre. That's very true. Yeah. yeah. Some so of those London theatres where you have to bring your binoculars. Yeah. <laughs> bird watching binoculars, yeah. you know. Yeah. They should do. Well, <laughs> they don't do it here, but obviously in London theatres they have the little $1 binoculars That's you right. can buy. Yeah. 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 Um, so with Australian Theatre Live, so mm. uh, we'll do the plug. So it's seven ninety nine a month or seventy four ninety nine a year with your first week being free, yeah, which is yeah. a bargain deal. That is affordable yeah. as yeah. well. Um, so I think for people who want to add in a streaming service for theatre, that's, that's really look, it, it is, and we made it so because we are a not for profit. You know, we're, we're, our vision, our aim, is to do exactly that: is to make theatre more accessible, mm. is to Promote youth theatre. I mean, we're capturing six productions at Sydney's Griffin Theatre Company. So good. Which only does Australian plays. Yeah. And this year has been a bonanza yeah. of wonderful 
new Australian players. Mm. The one that we, the last one we recorded was White Fella Yellow Tree. Yes. Um, a beautiful play. Um, yeah. yeah, I actually spoke to Dylan about that. First Nation story. Oh, you had Dylan yeah. on. That's right. Yeah. The playwright. Yeah. yeah. Um, extraordinary. Now, we want to get that out into communities with First Nations. Mm. We we want to, you know, we want to be able to to do that and have accessible theatre, which to me theatre is like glue in a community. Okay, it's it's a lot. The profession has been around for a long time. As a matter of fact, Toby Smiths, who's a actor, director, writer, Toby tells his funny stories about how he envisages the first caveman sitting there yeah. in the cave and he picks up a rock and he bangs his head and people laugh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then yeah. he does it again but it starts to hurt. Okay. And that one of the other guys, caveman, comes over and goes, oh, no, look, you don't have to actually hit yourself. Yeah. The first direction, you know. Right. <laughs> so, That's great. <laughs> so, oh, right, okay. So it's storytelling is part and parcel of who we are. Yeah. And theatre... Right from the Wakefield cycle plays that were religious, but they were mm. on huge carts in medieval times, you mm. know, where they used to reenact, you know, the devil and hell and heaven. And yeah, going that, right that back. was the main theme. Yeah. Uh, interestingly, it sort of still is today. Kind but, of sticking around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bad guys, good guys. <laughs> yeah. You know, all still that, the, all uh, that. the formula, isn't it? Yeah. So. Our idea is that theatre in every form is like a glue, especially live theatre mm. and especially captured live theatre. Yeah. You know, I've had students write to me going, wow, you know, I read that text and I got it. Mm. I got it. But w when I sat and watched it at home cast on my big TV, this was away, yeah. Michael Gow's away. I went, right. oh, I, oh, Yeah. And there's so many students who go, I want to get into the profession. That's great. I'd like to be a lighting designer. I'd like to be this mm. because they haven't had the opportunity to uh, see it. I think that's beautiful. Especially, and Away on there as well looks phenomenal. Oh, great. It looks like I yeah. saw it on the launch night uh, yeah. as it was popping up on the screen. I was like, that one is like, that's on my watch list yeah. just because of the stage design, the lighting itself. Yeah. Incredible. Dale Ferguson, yeah, did the design. Yeah. Um, look, and we've got, Opera, yep. um, at, directed by Neil Armfield, Plate, mm. which was the first French comic opera. Okay. Uh, and it was performed before the King Louis and right. he had recently married a Spanish princess and the rumour around the Versailles, the Palace of mm. Versailles, that she was a bit, she didn't, she wasn't the most beautiful looking okay. young woman. Yeah. So... Um, the playwright Rameau wrote this pl uh, this opera. Sorry, the opera wrote this opera yeah. around a frog who is tricked to believe that she's going to marry Jupiter, the god. Okay, yeah. so that's basically what the play is about. But yeah. it, there's very elements of Dame Edna Everage. Ah, oh, love it. Dance, pa pantomime Dame in it. Yeah, but this is all juxtaposed with a 28 piece Baroque orchestra. Oh, incredible, isn't it? And uh, and that's mixed in 5.1 surround sound, mm. beautifully mixed by Song Zhu yeah. and Abby at Song Zhu. So, yeah, it, it's, you know, even talking about it, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, exactly. You do, <laughs> don't you? You get so excited. Yeah. And I wanted to ask, with the, uh, the whole process of filming, do you go in beforehand and yeah. have to sit down with the script and the director and go, mm -hmm. all right, this is this, this is this. And not not with the theatre director, although the theatre director is welcome um, in the pre-production and post. And, in fact, Neil Armfield came in for three days mm. and sat with our direct, uh, editor Yeah, and they reworked scenes and all of that. Right, because I was wondering, like, yeah, if a director would want something highlighted yeah. or if something's been missed and they go, no, no, that's yeah. actually important. That's true, yeah, most definitely. Um, Dino Dino, D D Dimitriadis. Yes, Dino, And yes. Mary Rachel Brown came in for Dapto Chaser. Okay. And made a few adjustments. And um, Mary Rachel Brown said, oh, look, I never, you know, I'm still worried about that line. Can oh. we lose that line? And we went, well, we'll have a look. Okay, it's a little <laughs> cut. <laughs> yeah, so, um, no, we encourage. The, our aim is to keep it exactly as the director intended. Mm. We're not. 
we're, we're capturing and we're remaining loyal to the to the production, the yeah. director, the designer, the lighting, everyone. Running a small business? Are you promoting a new show or running a theatre space? Maybe you're looking for an area to reach potential new clients. Why not advertise with us on the Theatre Thoughts podcast? We have a range of packages and prices for you to put your ad right here on the podcast. For more information, contact us at theatrethoughtsteam at outlook.com or by heading to our website, theatrethoughtsaus.online. Well, going back to, I guess, where this started then, mm. where, where did the idea come from, I guess, because you've been all over, um, you've done so much in your career, you've mm. spanned multiple roles. Where, what? I guess it's a bit of a tough question. What led you to this? Well, look, it, it started right from the get-go, I guess. I left NIDA and went up to Queensland Theatre Company. Okay, yeah. And in those days it was like a rep company. Mm. You'd rehearse three and a half weeks, perform, and then rehearse the next play during the day. So I had 18 months up there, but one of my – First jobs was with the Theatre and Education program mm. um, with Kate Wilson and Steve Tandy and we toured the Badly Behaved Bunyip and the Man, the Snake and the Rainbow Serpent, okay. I think, um, and be- two beautiful plays which were First Nations. Yeah. And this is going way, way back, way back. Mm. And then I joined the main company and we did You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. Okay, great one. You're the kind of reminder we need. (laughs) And we toured 10 weeks on the road, one night stands. Oh, wow. And in those days you were billeted like a football team. Really? There would be the occasional hotel or motel. Okay. But every town had an arts council. Oh, See, yeah, pre-TV, yeah, yeah. like they might have just had ABC, that was it. Yeah. But they had an arts council group right. in each town and we'd arrive and then they'd say, I'll have whom and her, you come with me. What do you like, meat or chicken? Oh, wow. You know, and they, then we'd sleep out on the veranda of the country property. They would be wonderful hosts. Yeah. And that, that would be maybe 30, 40 minutes out of town. Wow. Over okay. these grates, yeah, you know, with the gates, yeah, cattle yeah, grates, yeah, and they'd say, "Right, can you can get out, fix the gate for us? Yeah. Thank you." <laughs> um, so I did a touring, and I toured New South Wales with that. Um, Carol Burns was on that. Paul Woods, Jeffrey Rush, uh, piano, um, and wow. a percussionist. Yeah, and we had our own proscenium arch. Okay, and the proscenium arch was expandable depending on the size. But I remember there was a cane toad left on stage. <gasps> oh no! I think that was in Charters Towers. Yeah, and of course the audience went berserk. But yeah, I think Lucy Carol Burns and mm. Charlie Brown's Lucy would do this. She booted it off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> she would do that as well. And there was another time where there was a. Because to get from prompt to OP, from left to right, right to left, there was no room backstage. You actually had to leave the community hall and run into the yard. Oh, no. And there was a cow. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) There was a cow tethered there. Far out. So, look, that love of touring and then I did more theatre and education for Melbourne Theatre Company and I realised that the responses were so genuine. They were so pleased to have a different format, a different – and see theatre, mm. professional theatre. Yeah. And I guess, you know, cut back to five to eight years ago, NT Live, as you mentioned, were mm. happening. And I thought, look, why don't we see Australian films uh, streamed or on mm. in cinema? Um, and let, how do we go about that? Well, it, there's a lot of – it's very intricate, yeah, especially around the licensing. Yes. We got a deal with the MEAA. Uh, you know, that took a long time. Yeah. Um, I guess there's whole questions mm, I could ask about actors being paid. Like, yes, Andrew. actors get paid yeah. up front and they get um, a back-end split Okay, um, once the, the capital expenditure is back. Right. The writer – is now getting an upfront fee plus seven percent of gross. Oh no, it's all worked out. Wow. The theatre company gets thirty percent. Yeah, so it's um, not just as simple as going in with a camera and no, just shooting it. No, wow, all of those things have to be in place. Okay, playwrights have to agree. And um, recently, because of it's interesting, this mm. 
Okay, so now we've got Netflix, Stan, and all these binge. All of them. Yeah. They're desperate for content. Yes. It seems like they've suddenly gone, oh, have you seen this theatre stuff? Oh, yeah. There's at least three episodes in that yeah. play. Yeah. All the characters are written. The backstories are there. Yeah. So as people used to option books, now they're optioning plays. Incredible. So they're saying, you know, we'll give you X amount of time. Wonderful for the player. Oh, yeah. So and good. justly deserved. Yeah. But there is a, a hangover from books like, mm. no, okay, I'm I'm securing the rights for two years yeah. to see whether I can sell it. Right. And I'm going to pay you X amount of dollars. But you can't have anyone else option this book okay. for film, you know. Yeah. Or you yeah. can't even make a – if you're making a documentary about it, you can't. Mm. You know, and news stories, well, please let us know what it's all about because this is our contract and we're trying to sell this for you. The hangover for that is that – Theatre now is included in you can't film, you can't make a film right. capture of it. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay. Here's the money. We want to license it. Yeah. Oh, but can I just do a theatre production? No. Oh, so we've okay. really – and there's yeah. – again, there's – it's muddy. People's right. perceptions around is it going to damage? Yeah. Is it not? Some yeah. people say yes, it is. Others say not. Mm. So it's still relatively new. So yeah. there's always challenges. Yeah, and I didn't even think of that because I know, like, because I used to be on a board of a community theatre group, and whenever you you know you wanted to do a licensing of a of a big musical or a show, it was gone. But there was nothing like on, yeah. you know. Um, so that yeah. kind of makes sense why yeah. these plays are getting swept off because they're going into see films. Prima Facie. When I first saw Susie Miller's play, mm. um, I was there opening night. Lee Lewis directed it and. I was just blown away. I said, yeah. this is – and, you know, I saw it another three times and Susie said, can you film it? Because we had filmed mm. Emerald City then and Jeffrey Atherton and Ensemble. We went, oh, yeah, we just need to raise the money. We just didn't have the money at that stage. Yeah. And unfortunately we didn't. Mm. Um, but then Lee got the job as artistic director up in Queensland Theatre Company or Queensland Theatre as it's known – and said, look, I'm putting it in my season. Okay. Sheridan's re- revamping. Oh, great, great, great. Yeah. But meantime, you know, Susie got the call and yeah. they wanted to option it for a television or film. Yeah. So we lost it. Yeah. Did but, National Theatre Live do it with Jodie Yeah, Kramer? no, but interestingly, yeah. to finish the story. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I jumped ahead. <laughs> no, interestingly, Jodie, so there was no going to be no filming. Okay. You know, because of this. Interesting, Jodie Cromer gets the script of yeah. hundreds for theatre mm. and goes, I want to do this. Oh, well, okay. it doesn't matter what television series or what's available. Yeah. Jodie Cromer doing Prima Face and she did an amazing job. She's incredible. Is, yes, do it. Yeah. But for us to look at other Susie Miller work now then proves difficult because, and again, rightfully so, but I guess my my – Disappointment is that we didn't have the original. Now, we would negotiate and go, okay, we'll pull it off. Yeah. You know, we won't screen it for a year. Yeah. But please let us have it okay. so that in 10 or 20 years' time when the dust has settled, yeah, academics and people and students can say, but the, I've found the original production. Oh, okay. At yeah, Griffin that's Theatre a good Company. one. That's a good one. That is real. That's, yeah, I like that because people love that. They go, this is the original one yeah. here that we're going to base it off. Yeah. So, and we're, because we're not for profit, we're really open to negotiation. So, we're continually working on how we can get that into the mix. Mm. Because, you know, let's say we were going for he- Heather Mitchell on um, RBG. That's yeah. Susie's new play coming at, yeah. at Sydney Theatre Company. Um, that would have the same. Licensing restrictions, I should imagine. Mm. But what a disappointment not to have Heather Mitchell yeah. in the original Sydney yeah. production. Yeah. You know, it's just such a shame. And we'd hold it back for three years or something, yeah. Yeah. five years <laughs> yeah. in order to get Heather. Yeah, exactly. Uh, just a wonderful stage actress. Yeah, incredible. So, man. anyway, that's one of our 
little hurdles. Hiccups. Yeah, far out. That's insane, isn't it? Because I yeah. was going to ask, I was going to ask, like, what have the challenges been, mm. like, setting it up? So that's obviously one of the biggest ones, I suppose. Yeah, the, the licensing agreements, getting all those in place mm. and, yeah, just the process. Look, let's look at something, um, you know, like a way or something um, – Queensland Theatre, it's all the creatives plus all the actors. Mm. So that means the set designer, the stage designer, right. we deal with. Yeah. Because we yeah. want to come in, we understand that theatre, theatre companies are there to make theatre, not film. Yeah, exactly. Not yeah. Cop- so we want to say to them, look, don't worry, we can do all this. Mm. And it's a fair deal. Yeah. Um, so that takes a bit of convincing Incredible. around perceptions. You know, we'd love to get something big. Yeah. We want to go to America. That'd be good. Because when, be you good. Think, when you think about it, we've got Margot Robbie, you know, your Hugh Jacksmans, your, you know, yeah, um, Chris, uh, our cinematographers, our directors, Shannon Murphy's over there yeah. doing a series from Baby Teeth she filmed. Um, Shannon directed one of our plays, A Liberty Equality Fraternity at Griffin. Oh, Okay. Yeah, actually, we sent her a copy when she was asking to be a film director. Yeah, you know, so, yeah, um, yeah. So, so the uh, the difficulty um, uh, around screen is that Australian screen personas are known very well now. Very well. So yeah. Khan, you know, you name it. Yeah. However, thank goodness, Kate Blanchett took over to STC. I was literally just about to name her. <laughs> yeah. 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 And has done a fantastic job in doing that. But then it's died down. Right, yeah. And I look at overseas theatre and I look at our theatre mm. and there's good and bad in both areas. Mm. And so why aren't we recognised as a theatre producing company? Yeah. Because we do carry our weight. Mm. We do, you know, um, kick above. Yeah. Is that what do you say? Kick above our weight. Yeah. Yeah. And, she, and Kate's a big advocate as well. I remember yeah. when she won one of her Oscars, she mm. she, I, she literally named Sydney Theatre Company yeah. in it. She was like, I just want to thank the Sydney Theatre Company for mm. yada, yada. I was like, <laughs> I was remember watching it just like, wow. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> what a shout out. Yeah. So, you know, I'd like to go to America for something like Sega Day and launch the platform and if it's in a year's time or two years' time, mm. we'll have, you know, triple the amount of plays on our platform yeah yeah and i think it's i think it's good to kind of have that cate- that well collection because one of um one of my teacher friends she said oh, i really want to give this monologue to my student um from golden blood and uh and i want to get her to do this monologue and i said well you know who's got it yeah that's right <laughs> yeah we're still in the process of editing yeah golden so blood. it's coming so get yeah, it signed is up coming yeah 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 which is great and orange thrower Yes, yes, we talked yeah, to Kirsty yeah. about that. I mean, um, that was amazing. I loved it. Yeah. It was yeah. so much fun. So it was a combination. I mean, look, I moved around after Queensland Theatre Company. I came back. I had 10 years before I did a country practice, mm. but I did guest roles on a lot of television. Okay. And then um, country practice, and that led me to I did Sunset Boulevard with Hugh Jackman. Did you really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's the and presence uh, of greatness. Yeah, <laughs> um, and I did uh, anything goes with Simon Burke and and Geraldine Turner. Um, uh, yeah, so I'm um, Sydney Theatre Company, David Williamson. Mm. So uh, you know, but then it was slowly sort of dissipating in a way. Television really became a a no go area for me because right. of a country practice. Okay. I think sometimes if you sometimes it works for you mm. and other times against. But I had I got the lead in two other series and was turned down by both networks because they said people will recognise him uh, as Simon from a country practice. Right, yeah. So I, I missed out there. So I did move into the corporate acting field. I did Impro on the Shores of Sardinia. Okay. I did the BP executive group in the cornfields of Brussels. What? In, <laughs> That's insane. Yeah, I did Levi Strauss in San Francisco. Incredible. And that's a funny story. I auditioned the actors uh, because it was me. I'd play the role mm. and for me to direct them in these little vignettes. Yeah. 
and I had one camera, I only had a day to do it. And I, I chose the actors. I had to get back to the agents in San Francisco quickly to say yes because we were rehearsing the next day. And I'd just come from Calgary and I was looking through all the headshots and I had a little video and I went, that person and that person. Well, they were best friends and went to the same drama school. Amazing. Perfect. <laughs> which was great. But he had no shoes. Okay. The actor. He was a brilliant actor. Yeah. And he came in in thongs and I thought, oh, you know, he's just – and I said to him, so, yeah. it, you know, I need you in a suit and sh- business shoes. And he went, oh, man, I don't have any of that. Oh, gear. No. Anyway, we had time first thing in the morning to go yeah. and hire him a suit and stuff. But anyway, so that – was my corporate entity and to this day we still have a corporate um, production company. Wow, incredible. And in fact, I think I mentioned we filmed a 18-minute um, drama mm. um, uh, only uh, last Friday. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so wow. um, uh, we really enjoy that. Busy. Um, that's part of it. And we still do the live. We've got mm. a, 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 a thing happening with the, the Navy. Actors love it. Excellent. That's so good. Well, um, I wanted to uh, ask you uh, our game that we do. Oh, uh, yeah. Our uh, Theatre Thoughts game, yeah. which would be great. Uh, so one minute theatre thoughts. So I'm yeah. going to put a, um, a timer on for oh one minute. So I'll set the time for one minute. We'll try to get through. Telling I'm ready. Go. I'm going to do the in breath. <laughs> Here we go. What is your favourite play? To perform the favourite play was Michael Frayn's Noises Off. <sighs> to watch was Langford Wilson's landmark play Burn This, an extraordinary oh, piece of theatre. I love Noises Off. Yeah. Uh, who was or is your theatrical idol? Look, too many to mention. Kate Blanchett, Heather Mitchell, Hugo Weaving, Richard Broxba, to name a few. There are many, many, many more contemporary Australian actors. Um, what is your most cherished theatre memory? I was performing a theatre and education play about star-crossed lovers in a women's remand prison in <laughs> Melbourne. <laughs> Excellent. I want to hear more about that. Which do you prefer to work in more, film, TV or stage? No preference. They are mm. all individual mediums and have their own brilliance. Great. Uh, do you have a theatre mantra? Yeah. Listen, listen, Listen. Love it. Oh, five seconds. Um, oh, what is your go-to warm-up routine before a show? Stretching, spine rolls, mouth. Most important, extensive, rigorous vocal warm-up. Excellent. And that's time. Oh, miss the other ones. Let's do the other ones anyway. All right. Um, who is the funniest actor you've worked opposite? Well, all, all actors are playful and funny. Difficult question. So top of mind, Melbourne actor Grant Pirro. Um, what area of most passion about? And I'm really passionate about this question. What's the area of theatre I'm most passionate mm. about? Youth theatre. Yeah. New playwrights, producers, directors, design, lighting, wardrobe, music, our future. Wow. That's the clip. That's the clip right there. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Grant, thank you so much. All right. Uh, Sorry, I hope I didn't rave on. No, no, it's much. great. Oh, you have so many stories and it's perfect for a podcast. Oh, good. No, good. thank you so much for coming on. So uh, if anyone wants to find out more about Australian Theatre Live, they can obviously go to australiantheatre.live and you can sign up there. Uh, well, yeah, australiantheatre.live. Oh, there's... There is a streaming. Yeah, I think it's stream.australian.live, but yeah. the main site. Uh, yeah, the main Australian site, australiantheatre.live, mm. and then you can have a look at our site and then click on watch this and it'll take you to the streaming. Okay. So please test it out for a week and have a look at This Much Is True, quite outrageous. And what one I love is Capto Chaser. Yeah, that's Mary on my Rachel list. Brown. Yeah, because I used to live in Wollongong, so I'm keen to oh, right. see that one. No, it's a sure. beautiful play, a beautiful that's play, yeah. Well, thank you so much. It's a pleasure, Justin. Thank you. Thank you to Sean Landers for helping to organise the podcast. A massive thank you to Grant Dodwell for joining us as our guest for the episode. This episode was produced by Echidna Audio. Get in contact with them at echidnaaudio.com to hire their recording booth or follow them on Instagram at Echidna Audio. Links for Australian Theatre Live can be found in this episode's description. Thanks for listening to this episode of the podcast. Help us support our podcast team and our Theatre Thoughts reviewers by joining our Patreon for as little as $3 a month 
or buy us a coffee by donating $5 and help to fund new independent theatre thoughts. Follow the link tree in this episode's description for more information. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time here on the Theatre Thoughts Podcast. Thank you.